Meditators, let's dive back into the world of NFT gaming with Gabby Dizon, co-founder of Yield Guild Games. Now, what Yield Guild Games is, it's uh, the largest community of NFT gamers. It's like a guild like you get in MMOs. Uh, however, these guys are all uh, dedicated around earning money through gaming. YGG's got a token uh, with a $600 million market cap. They're building huge things right now. So let's dive into how to make money through NFT gaming and learn a little bit about YGG. Now, if you want to help me take advantage of the current market, remember to like and subscribe below to stay one with the crypto markets. Sign up and get six free market meditations newsletters a week. You'll find a link in the description below. Meditators, welcome to another episode of the Market Meditations podcast. Today we have the co-founder of Yield Guild Games, Gabby Dizon. YGG is a community that invests and earns yield through NFT gaming. Gabby, it's an absolute pleasure to have you on the show. Thanks for having me. I've been really excited about this. We've had a couple delays and it's um, slightly killed me every single time, partially from me, partially from you, simply because, uh, and I just said this, this has been a dream of mine that an economy that I didn't even know was a dream of mine would come out around playing video games. I sometimes look back to childhood and think, Matt, how many hours did I not get paid for? Was I born in the wrong era? Um, I imagine you have similar thoughts or have thought about this. Are you more happy to have been born in the era where you can pioneer and lead this new movement? Or would you have loved to have been uh, able to do this professionally as a kid? <laughs> well, I've been a gamer since uh, the early 80s. And my first computer was a Commodore VIC-20. And just kind of living the video game life, I would say as an adult and doing it for work is just absolutely amazing. Right now, what excites you the most about the nft space straight off the bat like what right now gets you extremely excited in the industry okay so i've been in nft since 2018 and what's exciting me is just the combination of nfts and DeFi and DAOs that is leading to the metaverse um, there's a lot of concepts there but generally the combination of all of that is what really excites me right now what stage are we in do you think it's very early in the industry uh with a lot of innovation going do you think it's at a point where it might be so early that the industry dies down and doesn't continue exploding for a small period of time where do you think we sit right now okay so um when i got into nfts in 2018 it was extremely very early there was some initial hype back then that started with I guess CryptoKitties and the other projects. Axie was also born in 2018, and like there was, I would say, a lull from um, like late 2018 to early 2020 when the market, the general crypto market, wasn't doing well. And now there's a, kind of an uptick in uh, user usage as well. A lot of people are getting into crypto, so I would say like this is the most exciting time to be in because um, like more people are starting to use crypto but the industry is still incredibly early that there's still a ton of room for innovation and is there any particular type of innovation you think we're missing right now any gap in the space that you think more attention needs to go towards any particular problems you think need solving okay so with what we're trying to solve at yield guild is that we want to get more regular people into crypto like crypto is a hard concept to learn but if people do it via games and play to earn that means that you have the skill that almost everyone has being a gamer you can get into crypto with your skill of uh, learning how to play a game and earn money and you don't have to have any money to start with so i think this is one of the most important problems not only for crypto adoption but also solving wealth inequality across the world the wealth inequality getting solved across the world is something I've thought uh, a fair bit about recently as well, because I'm new to this space, but it's really exciting to me. And a lot of things I've studied before transition over nicely, even uh, my main profession where I trade a lot uh, can be applied to this space hugely. Uh, the, the concepts of supply and demand carry over very nicely. Now, what I want to understand is what, how is this wealth inequality being solved economically right now? Is it the 
um, nations with higher earning power are able to pay for time and um, like progress throughout this game by outsource like uh, paying more for things other people have grinded for and built long term in the economy. What place does it have? If you think about how a lot of work has been um, transferred to places um, like the Philippines, for example, uh, Philippines has a huge outsourcing or a BPO economy, as they call it here. And what happens is that a lot of big companies around the world have set up offices here so that they can do a lot of back end processing work at a, a very, I would say, high quality, but at a much lower rate than could be done for example, in, in London or in the U.S., just because the kind of standard of living is, uh, is lower in the Philippines. You can, you can pay relatively good wages without having to spend as much in the U.S. or in the U.K. Now, what we have with uh, games like Axie Infinity and play-to-earn games is that people are basically earning the same rate no matter where they are in the world. It doesn't really discriminate on what country you're from, um, like you know who you know as long as you can get into game and you have the skill and in the case of axie learning how to play the game and earn slp it will pay you the same rate like no matter where you are in the world and i think that's a super important distinction and a very important concept like if we have an economy in the metaverse um, as we have with axie that basically pays out no matter where you are in the world then now it doesn't matter that you know i didn't win the birth lottery i wasn't born in san francisco or in london or i wasn't able to move there because it was hard for me to migrate i can be in you know rural philippines as where philippines uh, where axis started blowing up last year and i can actually earn the same amount of money as someone who is born in a richer country uh, that's a great answer and uh helps explain exactly how it's going to work and also how it's going to continue to evolve uh, as the metaverse evolves and develops because it matters even less where you are in the world the more this new world is created. Now Yield Guild Games puts you in an incredible position to have a lot of impact on how this develops and forts. Uh, where would you say you and Yield Guild Games would lie in the space of entrepreneurs, investors, and a business. So exactly where do you guys lie? How do you see yourself? And what does Yield Guild Games do? Okay, so we call Yield Guild or YGG a play to earn gaming guild. So that means we are a group of uh, you know people who play um, these play to earn games like Axie and other games organized as a DAO. So it's an on chain um, organization with its own wallet. It's not a company, it's not an equity corporation. Um, the ownership of the guild is represented by the YGG token. So if you have a YGG token, it re represents your kind of uh, fractional share in the entire uh, guild. So um, so we are a, I would say, a crypto network that does the business of acquiring NFTs that earn yield and then lending these out to uh, our player community so that our players can, er can play these games like Axie Infinity, they can earn um, some uh, game resources that may be converted back to Ethereum or back to uh, fiat money like Philippine pesos or US dollars. And we take a small cut of that. So there is business. Um, there is a cash flow. There is an investing portion where we, we as a guild invest in NFTs um, and tokens um, of, uh, of play to earn uh, games that uh, earn yield. But we're also set up where the impact that we're having on on the people who are playing is part of the core business model this isn't like a company that makes a lot of money and then has a like csr organization where it tries to do good um 70 percent of the slp that um, our scholars earn goes back to these players the community managers that recruit and train them earn 20 percent and us as the guild we earn 10 percent so we have the smallest share and this is by design. The impact that we're having on these players is actually built into the business model. It's not something that we do after a fact, after we've made more money. We think that it's very important that what you, if you want to have lasting impact, it must be built into your core business model. I've seen this as a recurring theme with a lot of people who um, work in the NFT space. There seems to be a huge community uh, 
a huge importance placed on community, which is only natural because, I don't know, it's, it's gamers. It's just how gamers roll. Uh, if you've played MMOs as a kid, you know guilds have the guilds back. They work together as a team. And if you don't work as a community, the guild that does will overtake and uh, thrive. So outside of lending out assets to players and um, in exchange for their time and use of your assets, you guys take a small cut. Uh, what else does Yield Guild Games do? Do you guys invest in up-and-coming games that are coming out in the industry? Uh, do you Are you looking to help build, create, and play other games besides Axie? Yeah, absolutely. So we do have a team that is focused on investing in up-and-coming play-to-earn games. So what most people don't know is that we've invested in 11 games so far. So games such as Illuvium, for example, Sandbox, Formula One Delta Time, Rev Racing, um, Nifty Island, um, Ember Sword. So there's a lot of games that people can engage with um, at YGG. Some of them people are already playing. Like, for example, we have a very active community in, the, um, um, in League of Kingdoms. We ha also have a very active community in Splinterlands. But we also actively invest in NFTs and tokens of, of play-to-earn games that haven't released yet. Oh, wow. I, I have no idea you guys had invested in so many games, and I've heard of most of those. Illuvium actually looks amazing. I'm pretty excited for it. I've seen the gameplay trailer. The graphics are out of this world. I, I'm looking forward to seeing the standard of games, the money coming into it, the development teams increasing. Um, are there any games coming out that you're excited for that are on the caliber of the current games in the market that you've seen uh, being developed either behind the scenes or uh, are we still waiting for that to come into the industry? Okay, so I am excited in a bunch of games. Um, Guild of Guardians, for example, is a kind of ARPG that is mobile, that is kind of play similar to Diablo. And then uh, there are guild slots where uh, we've actually bought like guild slots good for at least a thousand players in YGG. Ember Sword is a fantasy MMO that is extremely exciting. Star Atlas is kind of a huge space opera sci-fi game. So there's actually a ton of really good games that are coming. Oh yeah, I, I actually saw Star Atlas on FTX recently. Man, it looked amazing. I just googled uh, Guild of Guardians because you told me about it. The art, it's just so incredible. This is, uh, man, I've been trading and heavily in the DeFi altcoin space, uh, multiple different areas of the cryptocurrency, but nothing excites me and I think is as fun and awesome as uh, what's happening with NFTs right now. Uh, so you guys recently raised 4 million in June. Uh, so congratulations on that. And um, followed by your token sale in July, which raised another $12.5 million. Again, congratulations. This is huge and incredible. Uh, what do you guys have planned for expansion? And uh, what areas will you be investing this in besides in-game assets and uh, up-and-coming projects, which we've already spoken about? Okay, so a lot of the expansion is going to go towards, um, I would say, serving the, the rest of the world with digital assets. We think of ourselves as similar to an Uber for digital assets across the world. So instead of people driving taxis, for example, they will be driving axes. They will be earning money in the metaverse and we will be providing the assets so that they will be able to do so. So apart from greatly expanding our operations in Axie Infinity, um, where we have almost 5,000 scholars now, where we want that to be at least 15,000 by the end of the year and get to 100,000 as soon as we can. Um, we're also going to invest heavily in other games that have good play-to-earn loops so that we can offer these games to our player base. What are you looking for in the next game? Uh, what do you classify as the good play-to-earn loop? Okay, so we like to invest in NFT assets inside the game that uh, we can lend out to our players. So this, there must be some kind of lending or delegation and there must be some form of token-based rewards. So, and this token should be uh, tradable for Ethereum, for example, because that means it can be traded back to fiat. So that's how that's a kind of play to earn mechanic that we like. And Axie does this beautifully with SLP and League of Kingdoms, for example. You can earn die from uh, from the spending that is uh, made on top of your land. So that's generally what we look for. Um, there must be some. You must be able to invest in an asset 
lend them out to your uh, guild community. We prefer games that have guild play as opposed to solo play so people can come in as a group. And yeah, we, we look for some kind of token reward that can be converted uh, back to value, either Ether or Fiat. Where do you think Axie Infinity has succeeded? Where a lot of other games have failed right now? Because there, there's more than just Axie Infinity as a play-to-earn game in the market right now, but Axie's leagues ahead of every other game. Uh, what segregated it? I believe that the best thing that Axie Infinity has done is really build alongside its community and really take care of its community for a long time. Axie came out in, I would say, early 2018, and I joined the community in October 2018, so almost three years ago. And the game was much simpler back then. You know, the land initial land sale came out in uh, January 2019 at really the kind of the bottom of the of the bear market. And yeah, people people didn't actually know that Ethereum was going to survive then, and that's when Axie released the the land sale. And uh, Axie has always done great at iterating on the game. It had a sim very simple auto battler before. Um, it released land um, in the marketplace, and now the game is much more advanced. There's an esports team that is um, or a tournament scene that is rallying behind it. And um, yeah, there have been times when, you know, things have been hard, markets have been low, but Axie had always been really consistent of building alongside its community. So just grinding through the bear market and nonstop building alongside its community, improving the games that are simple, it's gotten a lot more complex and still adding new features like um, the land part of the game is getting increasingly sophisticated and coming out. Um, a lot of people I know who love Axie are excited for that. Uh, now. Gabby, alongside uh, Guild Guild games, I know you do uh, Altitude games as well. How do you balance your schedule? How do you have time for so much? <laughs> so Altitude Games is a mobile game studio that I co-founded in 2014. I am very lucky to have really capable co-founders taking care of game design, taking care of um, programming. And um, we still do mobile games at Altitude. And we actually recently spun out Playcheck Games out of Altitude, um, which is our blockchain game studio doing battle racers and Mushroom Mania for Sandbox. And really, like what I'm, what I'm really good at is being a team builder. I don't do a lot of things myself, but I help build the teams that, um, yeah, that work together and do the work necessary to fulfill a, a company's vision. It's something that I've done while at Altitude, which is a very, very competent team. And that's what I'm doing now at YGG as well. Well, that to me now is fascinating, building out those teams, because I know it's very difficult to impart the vision you have for something onto a team, put the right people in the right place. Uh, what are your top tips for building out teams like this to run a company? What are the biggest mistakes you've made? What have you done really right? Well, I, I wouldn't really call it a mistake, but um, like going through the bear market was really hard, like extremely, extremely hard. There were m multiple times when we pretty much ran out of money, found a way to just get it through the next month and the next month. Uh, there were, you know, like uh, very kind partners, projects um, that kind of help us continue on. And yeah, like there were times during the bear market where we thought we really weren't going to make it. And it wasn't for the kindness of several people. And you guys know who you are. Like we were able to barely make it through. And I'm, I'm certainly glad we didn't quit because if we didn't quit, then we wouldn't be able to take advantage of kind of the good market that we're having now. Well, congratulations on making it through the bear market. Uh, I, I don't want to, I want to continue with this idea as well. So uh, what's the key to building a team like, uh, like Altitude Games that can run itself without um, initial founders? Uh, what's the key thing to do to build that team to run itself? What sort of players do you need to make sure you put in the right places? Okay, so I have co-founders in Altitude that really highly believe in the same vision that I do and uh, my co-founders are still actually there um, and they're leading certain several parts of the company so I've never been a micromanager myself I see myself as someone who sets the vision and kind of finds the right people who believe in that same vision are and are capable of leading um, and yeah that's been my general approach at the companies that I've built and that it's you know you start with the vision first like at Yield Guild, we have a very strong 
culture of you know we're not in here for the money we're here to make an impact around the world and if the money comes then that's a great side effect so that's how we filter a lot of the people that we're hiring at YJG we like it that people are attracted to the vision and the impact first before we talk about any sort of monetary compensation if people highly believe in what we're doing then I think the rest comes easy and then we we don't need a lot of um, supervision or micromanagement that's a great approach to take. Uh, I like that every employee has to go through that uh, or has to be aligned to some degree with the vision at YGG, which sounds like a sustainable long term one in a space where it's very easy to get distracted by the money with uh, how much it's exploding right now. That gives me confidence that if another bear market should come around, it won't be that difficult for you guys to survive through it again, regardless of the hit you take, because people all have that aligned vision are there for the same reasons. Uh, Gabby, to switch gears. Is. Um, I know you've got to go soon, but there's somewhere I really wanted to dive into. I know you're, in addition to NFT gaming, a big NFT collector yourself. Um, what are your favorite connect collections that you have right now? What do you look for in a collection you want to buy? Okay, so I do collect a lot of NFTs. I have several thousand NFTs in my collection across, you know, collectibles, art, um, game items um, and just playing out like generative art experiments um, for for art I really look at the story behind the artist like I can't get myself to to buy just a pretty picture I actually I when I buy art I think of myself as an angel investor investing in the artist behind it that is the general approach that I take and um, yeah so even with the art that I buy I've supported a relatively small number of artists that I've bought from um, repeatedly in I would say the last year or so and I I actually like that um, more than uh, buying from the big artists because I know that um, like the money that is going to these up-and-coming artists is something that is really hugely appreciated and goes a long way towards their career I love that approach and mentality it's one that will work again from both a business sense and a sustainability and vision sense uh, do you have any particular artists that you'd like to shout out? I know you've angel invested in a couple. Feel free, free to share some of the ones you really like with our listeners to go check out. Oh, okay. So some of my favorite artists, um, Shelly Soneha is one of them. She's an artist from the Philippines as well, as long as Caroline D. Um, there's an artist called Daniela Doodles, who's from South Africa, who is one of my favorite artists in the world. Um, and for the, I would say... Uh, for the kind of better known artist, someone like a Josie Bellini, who has been one of the pioneers in the space. Um, I like she was the first artist that I bought from um, in terms of crypto art. And, you know, there's a lot more like if we're talking about artists, I think I can I can just talk all day. Of course, of course. And Gabby, where I'd like to spend the last part of our podcast would be for the listeners that have made it through to the end who are passionate and keen to get involved in uh, play to earn where do they begin? What would you recommend they do, assuming they start from zero and have no money? The best thing about play to earn is that it doesn't ask for your money. It, it asks for your contribution of time and skill. So in our case, head over to our Discord, discord.gg slash YGG, and find a way to contribute. So some people, of course, a lot of them start as scholars, although scholarship slots are very competitive people become community mods and helpers and generally just finding ways to contribute to the guild is something that is um, seen and eventually rewarded um, and yeah we love it when people make their way from for example a community contributor to being uh, like part of the moderator some of them we've even hired into the core team uh, lovely well that's a great place to get started with uh, YGG uh, if you have no money uh, now Gabby would you give a different answer to someone who say has a decent amount of starting capital let's say ten to a hundred thousand dollars where would you recommend they begin in that instance well they would head to the same place in our discord there's around maybe 30 games that people are talking about in our different channels and I would say that find um, a game that you're really interested in. You might join, for example, the League, uh, the YGG Alliance in League of Kingdoms or come in as a, a player in Splinterlands or maybe you have your own axes and you join the YGG Esports team. So you head to the same place except that you're probably buying your own assets instead of renting them from the guild. 
uh, I mean, that makes a lot of sense. The information is uh, certainly invaluable. Uh, now, what if you don't want to play and you want to be a successful investor or trader in the space? Uh, what would you recommend the best approach is? Uh, not financial advice, theoretically. Where do you think people should uh, be investing? Is it best to invest in the items of a game you understand? Is it best to look at the tokens? Where do you think the most opportunity is right now? So it really depends on your level of, I would say, um, participation in this space. If you're someone who really wants to dive deep into the gameplay, it's probably good to get the NFTs. If you want to have a more passive involvement in the space, so for example, just for example, buying the YGG token um, kind of owns you a slice of like everything that all of the activities, all of the assets that we have, um, or buying some, for example, the MVI, the Metaverse Index token, is like your passive um, exposure to the metaverse or buying the AXS token, for example, of Axie Infinity gives you a slice of the kind of economic activity. So there's a lot of ways to go about it. Uh, could I uh, understand the YGG token a little bit better? You said it's uh, part of YGG is uh, DAO and the token represents uh, your voting rights within that DAO. Does it give you a percentage of the assets? Like what exactly does this token give me? Okay, so one way to think of it is like an index token where it gives you like a por proportional share of all of the assets that we have and the, uh, and the fees that are being generated. It's also a, it's a governance token, which means is that we, we kind of turn on the governance. People will be able to propose and vote on um, issues and proposals that the uh, community will be proposing for the developers and uh, the community to, to do. Um, and yeah, and we're all also actually planning a lot of different things for um, the token wherein um, for players, for example, if you're active in the guild, 45% of the token supply goes to the community by earning, not to buy them. So if you're active in the community, there will be so many ways for you uh, to, uh, to, just, uh, to just earn the token. So does the token does the full supply of the token represent the entirety of ygg like all the assets and fees in the ygg uh, are they correlated to 100 percent of the token so if one person owns 100 percent of the token they own everything that is ygg whereas if you own 10 percent of the token you get 10 percent of the fees 10 percent of the assets is that how it works yeah, roughly yes so what would the difference be between the token and say shares with voting rights Besides it being more easily used on the blockchain? Um, well, so this is a DAO, right? And uh, it's a DAO with kind of governance, uh, uh, with governance capability. So it is, I would say, somewhat analogous to an equity share, although there are a lot of differences. And I have to uh, kind of stress that, you know, like there are key differences. Um, there's a lot of utility that is baked into the token. There's some access that you can get. So yeah, so there are different ways to, to kind of interact with it. Okay, uh, so there's extra utility within the token that wouldn't be in, say, a share or something like that. So in fact, it's a little bit more useful than a share because there's more to it than you would get with voting rights and dividends and that you have with a share. Yeah, that's right. Okay, awesome. Then um, you do, well, you mentioned an index, Gabby, as well. Well, I thought oh, that was the MBI Metaverse Index. Yes, that's right. So that's the index um, token. Yeah. Uh, could you explain that a little bit more, who that's, say, appropriate for? or? Yeah, so MVI is an index token that's composed of some of the top um, uh, NFT projects in the space. So Axie is there, for example. I believe Illuvium is there. Some of the projects like Engine and the Decentraland. So it's just a collection of the top um, NFT-based projects in the space. And lovely, then free, free exciting things for people to go check out uh, and do their own research on, see if they're interested in any of them. Uh, Gabby, this has been an absolute pleasure. I know you've got to go soon. Uh, thank you so much for your time. It's been uh, amazing to dive into this. I really love what you guys are doing over at YGG. Uh, I'm going to be keeping my eye on it. Hopefully we can have you back on the podcast in six months time where you tell me we've done it. We hit 100,000 um, Axie users, smash that 15K goal. Uh, is there anything you'd like to leave our listeners with before we close out this episode? 
Um, yeah, if you just uh, want to learn more, just join the community. Start at discord.gg slash ygg and uh, we'll see you there. Yeah, the links will be in the description below, everyone. Meditators, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, that's it for this episode. With so many new trends in the crypto space, it is impossible for any single person to keep up to date. And that is exactly why I have my research team rate six free market meditations newsletters a week. Uh, we share the latest news and hot topics so you can stay up to date with the current market. To have access to all of this information, all you have to do is go to karushak.substack.com. If you enjoyed this episode, check out my latest episode with Kieran Warwick, uh, founder of Alluvium, one of the games which Gabby showed extreme excitement for.